Well, they said it couldn't be done. They said, no way Wrench can make a YouTube bullet brawl, a bullet video, into something that's instructive. Well, guess what? Today is a day where we take on all comers, and we are going to hopefully not only win all the chess games that we play, that's me, but maybe talk about what happened afterwards and provide some instruction. Uh, I, I played the bishop d6 line sort of thinking I was in a bishop to b5 uh, four knights. I wasn't in a bishop to b5 four knights, but as it turns out, it's worked out okay because we basically transposed. Though my opponent is definitely playing the most aggressive way that he can, which is what he should be doing. So he's going to play g5 now. I'm going to have to take it and then retreat so that I'm guarding the uh, the f6 knight. And now I need to unpin the knight on f6 as quickly as possible to keep the h-file closed. Okay, he takes on f6. I will take with the bishop. And uh, what I intend to do is bring this bishop to g4, maybe get my own attack going on the queen side here as soon as I can. So if I can kick the pony out and maybe play b4 to open some lines, I should be in decent shape. Now I can block on the dark squares, keeping the knight out is not that important as long as I can just keep the h-file closed, which turns out I can. And now I've prevented him from getting castled. I'm going to start my own opening of lines, although maybe not the best idea to do that and take with check, but okay. The problem for white is that the king is completely in the center and out of, out of safety, not within the reach of finding safety anytime soon. So if I can open up the position, I should be able to expose that. Okay, he's going to run with the king, which makes sense. We'll take on c3. He wants to get the king out as best, as quickly as he can. So let's let's take and sacrifice. Whoa, I was going to say we're going to sacrifice the exchange, but he panicked, as is easy to do in bullet chess when you don't have a lot of time. He panicked. But he uh, he actually played pretty well, I think, overall, before losing. We are going to back up quickly and learn something positionally from every bullet game we play today. That's right, it's an instructional bullet brawl. Maybe we'll call it the world's most instructive bullet brawl. Dun, dun, dun. Um, anyway, this is turned into a two knights. My opponent neglected to play knight to g5, which would be a fried liver. And normally, bishop to d6 is a move that, that can make make you cringe if you're a coach teaching beginner players because the bishop on d6 is very much like an old lady who swallowed the fly. It blocks the d-pawn, who blocks this, who prevents development. It can be a real nightmare to put a piece in the center blocking your center pawn. So if you're making that mistake, uh, please stop that. You're hurting the chess gods. But in cases where it defends e5, like normally in a, in a transposition to what would be a four knights, the bishop can go to d6 to defend e5, and at some point, black will, will relocate the pieces, and you'll find that that bishop maybe isn't the worst place piece, solidly supporting the center. But here, it's definitely not the best move. Normally, again, all those things I described happen on bishop b5. I was sort of distracted by getting the game started, to be honest with you. But what's funny is, even with that mistake, I think we experienced something instructive, because what I had to do to, to sort of make up or sort of recoup from my mistake was recognized that my pieces are not ideally placed as long as they are both blocking my pawns. And just like when many people play a d4 opening and then put a knight in front of a c-pawn, you have to look for ways to get the pawns in front and the pieces behind the pawns because space equals strength. When you have more options for your pieces, they get more powerful squares and more powerfully placed pieces lead to better tactics. So I recognize that and even in a bullet game played knight to e7. My idea is I want to play c5 as soon as I can so that I can get my pieces behind my c-pawn. I would have played c5 here, but I believe this bishop takes h6 move is a real threat, due to the fact that if I play c5, let's say he takes, takes, and takes with the queen, and I and I try to defend my knight on f6 by moving this guy, his bishop is on this diagonal, so he has moves like queen takes g6, winning on the spot. So I had to play king h7. I realized I couldn't really do much about g5, and I think at a high level, this position is probably pretty good for him. Maybe even knight takes is better. Because if he takes with the knight with check and I have to go back to guard f7, he might be able to castle along quickly and get a rook to the g-file, taking advantage of the fact that I'm not quite coordinated. So this should have been the way to really punish my slow development and need to retreat and, and make up for my mistake. 
but he played bishop takes g5 and I think now it gets a little bit slower for white. This whole plan of driving the h-pawn looks good, but really there's no concrete way to force me to open the h-file. You know, h6 is always met by g6. So at this point, I think I was doing fine, playing a lot of just quick tempo moves, which is never a good thing. If you're on the attack, trading minor pieces just for quick threats is giving up the power of your position. So don't do it. That is a, uh, a lesson, even in this bullet game for my opponent. Once I'm able to really close and block up the dark squares, I'm not even sure I'm playing the absolute best moves here. I wonder if I can, maybe I can take the pawn, but but even not, the other move is bishop to g5. Oh, sorry, bishop g5, and that might be better than what I did right away. Again, though, even though I wasn't playing the best moves, I was happy with my ability to close up the dark squares because I knew I would be able to to get this play and, and maybe even flip the script where white's king is the one who's in long-term danger because castling i'm going to open up and if he prevents me from opening up well i was going to play bishop g5 and, and now he can't ever castle so you know I, I was sort of set on getting that i played f5 a little too quickly it is bullet after all to this he should just take it and i can't take back because he pins me uh, so that would have been a uh, left the position in quite the mess but uh i think it's still unclear but he didn't see it, and so I, I didn't go down that pawn and, and ended up getting what I wanted anyway behind f5, which was to undermine the center so I could mobilize my pawn force. And that's what I did. Here, white's already losing. I mean, even before c3, I think this is a really tough position with this rook being out of play and the fact that he can't castle. So uh, real tough for white. And here he just it was just playing too fast. He should take it and then... I was going to guard the e-pawn and then slowly pick up g6, and, and he's kind of in a tough position. Maybe I should have actually brought the rook back to b8 and gone after this pawn. Who knows? But this was just a bullet move, and so we're not going to talk much more about that. And uh, we're going to take our lessons of development and, first of all, undoing mistakes in your development. When you block your pawns, you have to move those pieces so you can fix it and gain space. My opponent didn't play as accurately as he could have while I was sort of making up for these for this loss of time and, and my uncoordinated pieces on the queen side. He would have been better there, but overall, you have to if 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 you get yourself in trouble out of the opening, it's good to have the deal with the immediate threats because you're sort of behind in development. But your long term goals uh, still is still good to recognize what's weak about your opponent's position. So I, I knew my opponent's king was in the center, and I was looking for ways to kind of keep exposing that, and that's where I'd look to put the bishop on g5. So hopefully some of those practical lessons can help you, and for all the haters out there, just keep hating. Keep hating on the bullet brawls, and, and maybe you learned something today, maybe you didn't, but I bet you're not going to admit it. Love you guys. See you on chess.com.